knowing that God's faithfulness is without question, why then, listen carefully, why then do we have believers who do not seem to experience the fullness of the life, the power, the grace, the miracles of God over their lives? I want you to pay attention now. If it is true that God is faithful as we have seen from scripture, why then do we have situations that don't seem to change? Why then do we have... Con there is one spiritual mystery that except engaged with understanding is responsible for the supposed laxity as far as the manifestation of the hand of God is concerned over the lives of God's people. I just want to open your eyes to see it very quickly and then we'll pray. Because this night, in the name of Jesus, for someone, it is your night of liberty. It is your night of release by the power that raised Christ from the dead. It's powerful. Foundations are powerful. Regions have foundational problems. You know the power of foundations by the patterns that follow. The patterns, as it happened to son, it happened to father, it happened to elder brother, families where women feed the men. No matter how hard working the men are, something must happen. Joshua 21, 43 to 45. Joshua 21. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. Reading to 45. It says, and the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. I like verse 45. There failed not aught any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. Help me read the last sentence. All came to pass. How many? The word for your healing. The word for your lifting, the word for your restoration, it says all came to pass. Let me speak it as a prophetic word for someone. All must come to pass. I say it again, all must come to pass. All came to pass. That is the character of faithfulness. All came to pass. That means the quality of God's faithfulness insists that he keeps scanning your life to find out what has not yet come to pass that he said and to insist. That means you can see a man increase in finances and yet God is still on his case. And you say, God, but he's enjoying an area. God says, no, my assignment by the Spirit is to see that all. Someone prophesy all. That's a prophetic word for you. Say all. Mm, all. Lord, you said this year my family will rise. Thank you for my spiritual life, but all must come to pass. All came to pass. All came to pass. There was not one word. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians 5 24, 1 Thessalonians 5 24, the Bible says, Faithful is he that calleth you. That means you need to know the credibility of the one who called you. When you send someone, listen, when you send someone on errand or when, when you are about to send someone and he does not know you, most times you want to vet the credibility of the person. You are sending me, Moses said, but who are you? You need to reveal yourself to me. I cannot stand before Pharaoh doubting who you are and doubting your power. He said faithful, not just powerful. There are men who are powerful but they are not faithful. To be powerful means you have the ability, but the fidelity to remain is not there. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Hallelujah. Knowing that God's faithfulness is without question, why then, listen carefully, why then do we have believers who do not seem to experience the fullness of the life the power, the grace, the miracles of God over their lives. I want you to pay attention now. If it is true that God is faithful as we have seen from scripture, why then do we have situations that don't seem to change? Why then do we have conditions, maybe health, your home, your children, your life? What then is the problem? 
Psalm 74 from verse 9. I found a very powerful scripture. Please pay attention. God is speaking to us now. He said, we see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us that knoweth how long. How long this situation. How long will I continue in this situation of misery and poverty and attacks and pain. We do not see the signs that tell us the end has come. Next verse. Oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Uh-huh. Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? He said, pluck it out of your bosom. Verse 12. Let's hurry up. For God is my king of all, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. It means I know that you can do this. It is within your power to change my story, turn my life around, give my family a miracle. Your salvation and your works is not something I'm in doubt of. Next verse. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragon in the waters. Reading to 2014. Thou breakest the head of Leviathan in pieces and gave him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the mountain and the flood. You did dry up mighty rivers. The day is your own. Even the night is also your own. And thou prepares the light and the sun. Look at this, 17. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Thou hast made summer and winter. That means you are the one in control of seasons. That means, Lord, I, there is no reason why my life should be like this. As far as your faithfulness and power is concerned, the word of God already says you are ever ready. What then is the reason why I do not see my signs? 18. Remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that the foolish people have blasphemed your name. 19. O deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. Forget not the congregation of thy poor forever. The last verse. It says, have respect. Palash kanima lakusia. Have respect unto the covenant. That means... I don't know what is stopping you from stretching your hands. I don't have a right to question you, but I know how you operate. Have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are the habitation of cruelty. You know what was happening to the psalmist? He was looking for all the ways he can get God to arise on his throne and move. He said, Lord, I do not see these signs. I don't know why I can belong to such a powerful God, such a mighty God. One who gives children yet I'm barren. One who can open doors yet I'm stagnated. He said, I do not see my signs. But Lord, I do not forget. You parted the Red Sea. You are still a great God. I do not doubt your ability. What can I do that will get you up from your throne to arise and visit me? I am the creation. I am I'm a creature, not the creator. I can't command you. But there is something I can tell you. Have respect. Have respect unto the covenant. The only thing I can invoke that can make you arise is your faithfulness. Remember you do not change. Remember you are not a man. People can jump from one political party to the other depending on the situation. People can jump from one region to the other depending on the convenience. People can change but I know that you have fidelity. Have respect. I should not be in this situation if it is true that you are my God if it is true that you are the lifter of men if it is true that you are the door yourself have respect there needs to be something that gets you from your throne to arise in your power and your majesty and to visit me he said we see not our signs please pay attention let me the next five, ten minutes and let me establish something very powerful. Psalms 11 and verse 3. There is one spiritual mystery that except engaged with understanding is responsible for the supposed laxity as far as the manifestation of the hand of God is concerned over the lives of people. God's people. I just want to open your eyes to see it very quickly and then we'll pray. Because this night in the name of Jesus for someone it is your night of liberty. It is your night of release. 
by the power that raised Christ from the dead. 11 and verse 3 Psalms, please give it to us. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the, it didn't say what can the people do? The righteous, even though they are the righteous, by the time the foundation is destroyed, the Bible says there is serious problem. The word foundation is a very important word. I wish I had the time to teach, but this is a miracle service tonight. Foundation simply means the point of origin. Foundation means the starting point. Architecturally, foundation means the load-bearing part of a building, usually invisible. So when the Bible talks about foundations, he means the starting point, that there is something about the starting point of a man and that if it is faulty there has to be a rule of engagement to correct it in other words to see the mighty and outstretched arm of God hallelujah in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24 Jesus himself was teaching and he said it does not matter the dexterity of your architecture no matter how true how powerful what you build is if it is built on a faulty foundation he gives you a guarantee that something will go wrong i will liken him he says to a wise man which built his house on a rock to 27 next verse the bible says the rain descended the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell not not because of the paint not because of the strength of the materials that were used simply because it was on a very solid foundation next verse 26 it says so also there is someone who built his house what was common with both of them is that they built and they built well there was no problem with the building maximum architecture was employed in the building but the problem was the foundation listen very carefully the same thing that happened to the one who had a house on the rock happened to the one who had a house on sand and the bible says the last verse 27 that the same rain the same winds the same floods came and the bible says it fell and so great was the fall of it can i tell you the truth faulty spiritual foundations have prophetic spiritual implications to the point that it can seem to cripple the hand of god over the life of a man most believers do not understand that the realm of the spirit has a predefined modus operandi and if you do not know how the realm of the spirit operates you can keep wishing for things to happen and keep being embarrassed forever the psalmist said listen if i keep using emotions and i keep complaining and i keep grumbling i may not receive any result but i need to drop all this aside and say have respect for the covenant not just my tears not just what i feel not just my prayer request are we together when hezekiah in chapter 38 of isaiah when isaiah came and prophesied to him and said put your house in order you will not recover the bible says he turned his face to the wall and said remember how i have worked diligently before you in truth and with a perfect heart and i have done that which is good in your sight he didn't say remember i am a king he needed to use a basis to say i can't die not based on this there are rules of engagement in this kingdom now let me tell you the truth as powerful as god is as powerful and mighty as god is he didn't cast sin out of man why will god seem to be so helpless when he was the one who created man he was the one who created the devil that caused man to fall if god wiped the whole the whole earth and heaven why did he not just wipe satan away and start afresh if i were god why would i go through the labor of coming to die as creator he was not co-creator he was creator and is creator you thought he would just say sin get out of man satan vanish dematerialize and go away i am god he's still within his power is there anything too hard but even god had to submit to the modus operandi of the spirit are we together now negotiated and sent jesus jesus came through the womb of a virgin walked 30 years 
died, was buried, went to the grave, all to save man's sin. Was it that hard for God? When you understand that, you will stop the realm of wishing and hoping that things will change. God, you are mighty. It does not take you anything to lift me. You are right, but you will still remain in that situation because that is not what compels the mighty hand of God. Let me tell you the truth. God is touched by his love, but he arises based on his honor to the modus operandi of the realm of the spirit. Have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are a habitation of cruelty. Many of us come from families that have fraternized with darkness foundationally. Many of us right now are sitting on all kinds of demonic things that we have not engaged the word of God and spiritual understanding to bring liberty practically. And yet we keep saying it does not matter. And our lives keep showing that there is a legitimate ground for the continuity of certain things please listen carefully i when it has to do with oppression and the rules of the spirit it does not care whether you are a preacher it does not care whether you are sincere the bible says the ones who will be asking questions are even the righteous that if the foundation be destroyed it is the righteous who will even be complaining hallelujah for instance in joshua chapter 6 from verse 26 when Joshua destroyed Jericho, he made a pronouncement by the Spirit. Listen carefully. Joshua adjured them at that time saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and builded this city Jericho. He said he shall lay the foundation in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. Joshua made a pronouncement that anybody that rises to rebuild Jericho again, as that person lays the foundation, he will lay it on the life of his firstborn. And as he completes it, he will complete it on the life of his lastborn. 1 Kings chapter 16. Let me show you something. Ahab verse 33 now. The man called Ahab, the Bible says he made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him read verse 34 please or let me just read it and you listen he said in his days did hiel the bethelite build jericho is that in your bible the bible says he laid the foundation in abiram his firstborn if you were the firstborn of that man it was not your fault to be the firstborn you just know that as soon as they started that project a mysterious disease will come upon you and you'll be wondering what did i do wrong not knowing that a speaking is looking for you and you may go and say but medical doctors will check you what is wrong with the machine cannot diagnose what is wrong not knowing that the person who spoke has died yet the prophetic word is still in force abiram started getting mysteriously sick until he died the firstborn and the man still refused in defiance he set up the gates thereof now the bible does not tell us whether the man was aware of the prophecy or not whether he was aware or he was not aware as far as the prophecy was concerned whoever triggers it let it work ah. please listen please listen please listen please listen because this is not about being sincere and insincere what did abiram do to die please talk to me did he kill anybody did he look for anybody's trouble his only offense was he was born from a family that decided to fight the prophetic word the bible says when he set up the gate his younger son exactly what happened to the elder brother now started happening to the younger brother what is wrong with you again i'm sure the mother will say let's rush to the hospital now according to the word of the lord which he spake by joshua the son of Nun. hallelujah don't you dare think it does not matter that our forefathers buried people alive and while those people were being buried they said we we, we are dying but the ones who will be alive will be worse than death and they said we don't care when they were shouting at Jesus crucify him they didn't know what they were saying 
and for many people we say it does not matter if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do Deuteronomy chapter 18 from verse 9 there are many people who have subjected themselves in ignorance or by reason of the things that happen in time past it says when thou art come to the land which the Lord giveth thee thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations uh-huh next verse it says there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire or that useth divination or an observer of times an enchanter a witch to 12 11 please or a charmer a consultant with familiar spirit or a wizard a necromancer verse 12 for all that do these things are an abomination unto the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god will drive them out from before thee hallelujah i think i shared a story here in koinonia and let me say it quickly before we begin to pray about someone who a young lady a, a young woman who wanted a child desperately and she went to somebody and the person said well i know what to do and you will have a child but that when this child is 20 20 on the dot make sure you return this child back for some kind of sacrifice that will be done and the woman looked at the old man and said 20 years from now you probably will be dead she pointed at a tiny boy who was playing there and said this boy will be alive he's the one who will be here this is a case that i handled it's not a story they told me when this lady was 20 on the dot may god help you to come and stand here and say you like her you see what will happen to you you came innocently and it's not like any you are bad you are not bad church born again person just came and things started going haywire and then people started advising the mother say quietly go to that man and resolve whatever it is or his son so someone recommended her that she would come to me when she came and i looked at a lady wonderful lady wonderful woman the realm of the spirit doesn't care did you hear what i said wonderful lady wonderful man the realm of the spirit does not care foundations are powerful foundations are powerful regions have foundational problems you know the power of foundations by the patterns that follow the patterns as it happened to son it happened to father it happened to elder brother families where women feed the men no matter how hard working the men are something must happen hallelujah but this is why God has ordained a meeting like this because in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God everything that needs to be corrected for your glory to rise everything that needs to be put in place this night in the presence of the angels and the presence of the mighty one who is the king of glory it must be corrected this night <laughs> hallelujah I came from a background and a family and a region where I didn't see some things happen to people I had to sit down and study it sincerely and and to be honest myself that if I have to rise to a position where I'll be able to serve and honor the name of the Lord at a global scale there are things that need to be corrected and done I've told you my story as a man of God demons used to oppress me most people will not tell you the truth they didn't care that I was anointed it didn't stop the sick from being healed though yet I would go to bed and here comes this wicked spirit and because of the prophetic inclination I would see them I thought it was so with everyone how can I go and preach and a spirit is running out in a meeting and yet coming to me in a room and I'm driving it and it's not going have respect for the covenant I know one a very proud gentleman years ago he walked into my room I used to counsel in a small room that time and he walked to me and I saw a spirit standing behind him and he was sharing with me some of his challenges and I said can I pray for you it looks like there's something said, no 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 I don't believe that I said okay no problem I'm sorry let me just pray as I said in Jesus name the last thing that gentleman will remember was maybe like 30 or so minutes later on when he even recovered for the next three days he kept texting me what happened he said this is everything I believe I don't know where to start from let me tell you the truth foundations are real foundations are very very real hallelujah foundations are real you find patterns you find all kinds of demonic things that seem to veto the efforts of men 
regardless what they do there are sincere men of God who have graces that should be speaking across the globes but these foundations because of an incorrect foundation that has not been dealt with with understanding the devil does not need to cause medical problem a problem of delays and pain and all of that it doesn't need to do that all he needs to do is to ensure that that faulty foundation remains the the faulty foundation will manufacture itself many kinds of wrong problems do you cut a tree by removing the leaves one by one? Think how burdensome that labor is. Foundation. By the time you uproot it, even if the leaves are still green, just leave them as a matter of time. They will dry up because it has lost contact. The same way that tree fell, this is how I declare over someone, whatever has connected you, in the name of Jesus, it gives way this night. Listen carefully. This is someone's deliverance already. I've shared with you, you see, by reason of, of the prophetic, I have, I have encountered many spirits. I don't share all these testimonies because I want people, people's faith to be grounded on scripture, not just on prophetic experiences. Are we together? Yes. But I, I, I usually repeat the ones I've shared for emphasis. That I was praying one night and all of a sudden my ceiling just disappears and I see this strange creature having an eye as big as a human head two eyes fierce anger help them please with the tail that looks like a dinosaur the tail had its own life separate from the creature and it was looking at me like I'm looking at you feel me and he says so you think you can bring God's people into abundance that is a spirit that controls poverty across territories. Let me speak to someone. Whatever has kept your family down, honestly, in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who is the lifter of men, I decree and declare, every spirit lets you go now. Let's you go now. It must let you go now. Hallelujah. Sit down, please. Many years ago, I came into this city and usually when I come, when I'm traveling, I would just take a cab. Moving across the city, I would take a cab. And I remember one of the drivers that, you know, I took the cab. He was talking to me and he said, I listened to him. He was speaking in broken English. And he said, there is a spirit in this city that never allows money to stay in the hands of people. This was a driver speaking. And he said he would get money and yet not be able to do anything. So I think maybe they consulted, you know, all these people, they believe in everything. So they consulted a medium or some kind of thing that now told him that the moment he has money, he should run out of the city and go and start something. And he said he was almost completing his house. Now, you don't have to be under that kind of threat. There's authority in Christ, but it comes through light. It does not come through desire. The challenge with believers is that we make bold claims of the manifestation of the promises without the requisite level of light and illumination. God forbid, I can't be in this situation. What is the light that supports that statement? Otherwise, you will be wasting your time. Are we together? John 1, 5, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There are families that it is not sickness that plagues them, but this spirit of poverty. Even if you make so, that someone in that family a director in NMPC, they will still be poor. Are we together? There are many people who will bring certificates for you. Three doctors, PhD in a family, and none of them has a good job. What kind of thing is that? There are people who have been in this city. The land itself has rejected them. Everything fights you. Everything fights you. Is someone learning? Maybe there's someone watching, there's someone following, and you're saying, Apostle, you are just describing my situation. As a family, we, we don't know what the problem is. Don't know what the problem is. You take in, and after two, three months, here comes this strange and wicked spirit. And somebody comes to molest you, and by the next day or a few days after, you lose the pregnancy. That one will need more than medical attention. That one will need a miracle service like this. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know someone who vowed to help a man. And I'm telling you, I, I kid you not. By the next day, the person went to the office and the person said, I cannot remember seeing you. Abba! You can't remember seeing me? When you said I should come with my CV tomorrow, for instance, and give me a job, what happened? Mm. 
Hallelujah. What of people who actually get things, but they don't have longevity in their life? I don't mean physical longevity. Nothing stays long. The moment they have money, just start praying for them. Because it's a matter, in one month it goes down. Once you give them a position, just know that in, in two or three weeks in that office, something must happen that they must lose it. It's like if you don't lose good things, the realm of the spirit is at a, a state of unrest. If there is anything that is on anybody's head here that followed you for this meeting i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit i lift it up from you now i lift it up from you now i lift it up from you now hallelujah i know someone who traveled abroad responsibly just when they were checking people at the immigration i think i've shared the story they were looking for somebody who was a thief and they saw him and i think there was a up to 50 percent resemblance with the thief and they moved him to one room just like that i don't look like a rich man i don't look like somebody who is impacting the world my face now looks like a thief i ah, know every wrong every fail in the name of jesus that is programming evil over you that makes evil to look like good and good to look like evil. I declare that veil is torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Hallelujah. Please hear me. True story. Someone was begging for money from somebody to take care of an emergency in the hospital. This is a true story. And when the person was doing the transfer, Something came on the person and he missed the account by one digit and he sent the money to someone else. This is a true story. See, the, thing I've, the things I've seen in this life bar by reason of ministry. How do you plan to bless someone? Then it's when it's now your turn, they miss it by a digit. What was that other person praying that his own account was the one that came? Listen, do you know that God is called, you read your Bible. The sons of Jacob, I hope you know, Jacob had 12 sons. Is that true? The first of them was Reuben. Read your Bible. You are Bible students. Jesus is never called the lion of the tribe of Reuben. What happened to the firstborn? Not even Simeon. How did Judah come out to become the lion of the tribe of Judah? When Jacob was blessing his sons, you read your Bible now. He looked at Reuben and he said, you are my strength. You are the, the excellency of my strength. But you are as unstable as the wind. He said, thou shall not excel. And even Jesus, when he came, he refused to identify with that man. He would have polluted his own ministry. Not lion of the tribe of Reuben. Not lion of the tribe of Simeon. Lion of the tribe of Judah. So don't say we are the most enlightened family in our area. The realm of the spirit rearranges based on the covenants you are standing on. Did you hear what I said? It is, you can claim whatever you want to claim. The realm of the spirit with digital precision will rearrange everything based on the, the code that it was programmed with. That means it is possible to be a man physically, but the realm of the spirit brings you to a position of a woman and you will find out that you cannot feed your wife because the realm of the spirit does not yet authorize and recognize you as the Abba the bread provider you can be a graduate in a family and the one who takes care of them is the one that did not even go to primary school because in the realm of the spirit that person is standing on a covenant that the realm of the spirit recognizes that one as a breadwinner I'm saying that because we're about to pray this miracle service don't worry we'll finish on time don't say I'm still teaching this is the deliverance you are receiving no, tonight you have to be angry. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. In the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? Do you know how many gifted people are in this nation and in Africa? World ministers, music ministers. These are people that are supposed to be at a global level. But this foundation has kept them. You talk with them, you are like, what are you still doing here? There are people who will listen to you and say you are the exact person our company is looking for. And after three years, they will pass you every day and never call you for a job. 
they will bring an ignorant person and train the person send the person to france return the person back and give the person a job whereas you already have the qualification how about ministers of the gospel just because you are sincere let me tell you the truth liking you is a grace make no mistakes about that the liking you and receiving of your ministry generationally speaking is a grace you can be sincere and do all you want to do it will still not work is someone learning now wicked spirits programmed in foundations it's like they tie you with a rope just when you are moving you are about to obtain this the way it pull your father it pulls you back you are on your way going whether you are a preacher it pulls you back just when you are reaching your destiny helper it pulls you back in the name of jesus whatever has tied you i cut it away from you right now i cut it away from you right now i'm saying it again i cut it away from you see listen can i tell you believe me when i tell you you can know that you have had victory over your foundation the result will speak instantly a job that was difficult suddenly comes listen job chapter 42 give us verse 10 and 11 let me show you something you can know when a demonic resistance holding you has left the realm of the spirit and the physical realm will bear witness because the earth listen to me the earth even water is a witness and the lord turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends so the lord gave job twice as much as he had but 11 is where i'm really going to what suddenly happened to him you can know captivity has turned around watch this then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before question what drove them you think they just left you think they did every one of them started feeling like kite what is why is job's issue coming to my heart that's because something was corrected in the realm of the spirit watch this the bible says they did eat bread with him in his house they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the lord had brought unto him and then this is how god restored him every man also gave him a piece of money so they had it before while he was suffering the same way your uncle has it and is aware that you are in this city you have sent a text sent a text stop sending a text come for miracle service carry an anointing upon your head i hope you believe what i'm teaching you everyone gave him a piece of money what kind of business was he going to start in that state of pain how long would it take him so the lord restored in the realm of the spirit but physically things started happening can i tell you the truth you can know doctors when a patient has malaria how do you know the patient has malaria or typhoid there are signs is that true he goes to the hospital and there's what they call vital signs am i right medical people you now begin to check ah uh -uh. temperature is running the person is um maybe vomiting stooling or doing whatever how do you know the patient is recovering you know the patient is recovering because things begin to change are there times when you take drugs and find out that the drug did not affect the intended change you still go back to the doctor and say this drug did not work they will now do a further test and say ah we thought it was this so just because it was a drug did not mean it solved every problem as far as your body is concerned you didn't take a drug even though you were on one week medication your body did not recognize it because it was not the solution don't say i've been praying don't say they prayed for me when you take malaria drug for for what now typhoid it may not work but it is still drug tonight the right drug is coming on your head yes, in the name of jesus christ as i'm declaring over you you may not know what is changing for some of you as i'm declaring it's not only your health by tomorrow if phone calls you will wake up with phone calls and say what is happening to me what is changing in my life listen please hear me believers let me tell you the truth by the power of the holy spirit i've been mandated to insist that your life produces results yeah. hallelujah undeniable unquestionable results 
some of you by reason of what is on your life you are supposed to be building houses for people not even looking for rent honestly because in terms of value you have worked on yourself let me pray for someone again what is sitting on your destiny that will not let you and your family rise by the power that is in the name of jesus here at koinonia all oh, be lifted from your life be lifted from your life be lifted from your life that demonic embargo The cause of the firstborn, the cause of the lastborn, the cause of siblings, the cause of idolatry, the cause of necromancy, the cause of fathers sacrificing children to be able to get money. It may not be my fault, but the Bible tells me I have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus the righteous. I decree and declare already for someone that embargo on your life, that programming, it must give way this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe in what I'm telling you? What is there about the mighty hand of God that you cannot see? But let me tell you, if the foundations be destroyed, when the foundation is destroyed, God wants to step in, but there is a limitation because the covenant does not allow him to operate based on that. What the Holy Spirit can do is to grant you access to light to know what you need to do that takes away the barrier are we together now yes between you and god and your breakthrough and testimony there are barriers principally foundations there are foundations that keep speaking woes of ill health there are foundations that speaks woes of failure the only way you eat is by being a servant you never can rise to a position of influence whether as a man of god as a businessman it does not care whether you are in america whether you are wherever it does not matter do you know nathaniel said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth didn't you see what happened to samson was samson not a nazarene you think samson just lay down and told the lady to cut his hair you think he was that stupid when you have that kind of power will you be that foolish don't downplay the power of foundations it can keep quiet for 10 years you will think you are fine but by the 11th year it will come and pull you down and cancel everything the house that fell that was built on sand it didn't fall from day one there was a time that both houses were nice if they even told you to pay for the house you may prefer the house on sand to the house on the rock wait until the storms come wait until the wind blows that's why you can see someone who is a billionaire for 25 years then by the 26th year the foundation says i've been quiet and in one year everything goes down one year shame comes a ministry can blossom for many years and then it's like an ignition from the realm of the spirit and boom, just like balloon everything goes down but i know whom i believe and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Against that day. Against that day. Now, there are some of you, you may not be poor. Listen, we're about to pray. You may not be poor, but you never have helpers in your life. Everything you get comes directly from you. That's a terrible way to live. Everything. If a door must open, you are the one who must open it. If you must eat, it must come from your hand. You do not know the help of God. Hallelujah. A man of God, you are a ministry. You pay all the bills by yourself. You pay. Nobody sees you and says, no, I believe in what you are doing. I'm standing with you. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. I know someone who was walking and what he uses for his transport from where he was staying. Sincerely speaking, at the end of it, when we calculated it, it was not more than 10,000 that was left. That means you are working on, but what you are earning, subtract transportation and the rest. And at the end of it, what you are really earning is 10,000. There are spirits that fight and destroy breadwinners of families. The moment it identifies that you are the one God is using to bless a family, here comes that thing. It will pull you down. So you go to a region and only find old people. Where are the young people? 
the spirits know that the, it will take care of Baba and Mama and it will fight you. You can see a young person sitting down and there is absolutely nothing working in his life. Two prayer points and I'll begin to minister within the time I have left. Tonight God wants to shake away this thing. Wow, dear transform believer, I know Hallelujah. that you want to watch the complete part of this video, story of, I think it was but as it our tradition, we'll bring the part two and we'll be saying that this preserve, is the part two from the beginning of the video. The Do also well like this video, subscribe to the you know, channel like and Baba, turn on your yes, notification yes, bells, put on that, that bell notification that so that you will be notified whenever a video is posted. Don't just subscribe, turn on the notification. I'm so blessed by this because this can be the reason why a lot of people have remained in abject poverty and curses hear me foundation you don't renovate the foundations righteous. oh my god that was striking if it is not if working, the foundation be destroyed is, what can the right be seen as this is not a that can take to the ground and it carry you is it not in your bible the right that god can pick a man from a dunghill is a location and, and place him somewhere else see that you have in christ jesus over prevailing circumstances the devil know they hear let me, permit me to use that that, that lamp so for the The devil region, does not hear that you are redeemed. He will still come back to see if you know what you have, you have so gotten. The devil does not want to know that they the the paid the for you. He will come and ask you that this thing you stole it. He will give you evidence. He will give you evidence. And you have to stand with the new evidence you have and present it before God that no, I can no longer be oppressed. I can no longer be depressed. I can no longer be in poverty. I can no longer go through causes because Christ has paid for me. And that I is what is more myself. real. And I a lot of believers myself. feel that immediately they give their life to Christ. Some things will just go back to normal. No, no, no. The devil doesn't give up easily on you. He will attack you with knowledge. See, he came for the, 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 the uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and told them that, no, has God said you should not? He knows the kind of life they have in the Garden. He knows the relationship they came with God. He still came there. If Satan could come to Jesus, who he knows was the Son of God, and start tempting him with mundane things, even with the scriptures, hoping that he changes because he's tired of suffering as being a man, or he's tired of his limitation of being a man, if he could come to God himself in the flesh to tempt him, who are you? He knows that God could do all those things. He's still tempted in trying to provoke him. My dear, Say after me in the name of Jesus. And he's ready to use it on I decree and declare. He's ready to take off take by the blood. He's a thief. Of the That's his name. A thief. Right and now. To steal, to kill and I to declare. Destroy. So brother, every I negative foundation. To fight for every altar. To fight for the kingdom and the redemption of your family. By the blood of Jesus. To believe God's word. Be destroyed and establish now. Go ahead what and God pray. has died for. What God has died for you to have in your life. I believe that this video scared your faith and you will show it to somebody. I will leave the path of your spirit in this video to bring it out after this one and also I would, I would really appreciate if you share this video to somebody to watch. I would really appreciate if you watch the next one to be done. Fighting and access, be destroyed, fighting advancement, be destroyed. This is section here I share with you, you know, striking, um, things I learned from the video that are uh, the sermons I shared by Apostle Joshua Sermon and I know a lot of people don't really um, like um, watching commentaries but then again I encourage you to watch it sometimes I share things that will really bless your life uh, I encourage you to um, stay to the end of this video and be posting the prayers as you can see the prayer section is really powerful I'm not accepting I'm not stopping you from watching it I'm only in the name of Jesus because it got too long I will in the name the of Jesus, help us under the anointing. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 9. My God fire is pouring in this place. I just wanted then to the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Read verse 10. And I give unto you an anointing that will set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus.